This is a tutorial on how to use the new Super Quiz add-on on Google Drive. So what I have here is a form that I've created for my 8th grade math class. And um, the only important thing that you need to know for using Super Quiz is you have to have two questions that are mandatory at the front of your quiz. So the first one is, what is your full name? And the second one is, who is your teacher? The other thing that you must do is you must require a login and have uh, the form automatically collect the Julian Charter School's username. Um, so I've selected those two things here, so that's taken care of. And then I just have my full name question and my teacher question. And once you do that, you're all set. What you need to do as a teacher is go through and create an answer key. So I've created all of my questions here. What I need to do is view live form. And I've actually already completed this test. So now that my responses are submitted, the answers um, appear when uh, in my new document called responses. So I have my timestamp, username, full name, and teacher, and then all of the answers that I've provided. Okay, so um, once you get to this step, you're going to go to add on. And if you haven't already, you'll need to install the super quiz by going to get add on and finding super quiz. So then you'll go to super quiz and go to main menu. And then this is a checklist to make sure that you have everything set up correctly on this form. So you need to make sure you meet these requirements in order for the grading system to work correctly. So it says the first thing is the tab with your responses must be named Form Responses 1. So that's talking about this section down here. And it is named Form Responses 1, so we're set. And then on number two, the correct answers to your questions should be entered in row two, and that's right here. And I do have the correct answers already submitted. And then the third step is the first four columns must be arranged like this. Timestamp, which I have, email or username, which I have, the full name of the student, which I put answer key, they would type their actual name, and then who is your teacher. Okay, and then if you can, it tells you here if you need to go back and add any of those questions, you can go back and edit your form. And then please be sure to delete any blank columns that you have. So I need to scroll through, and here's a blank column. I need to delete this. So you can do that by push, pressing delete or just going to delete column. Make sure I don't have any others. Okay, so I don't have any others. Um, and then we are set. Once you create that, you're going to, or once you have all of these things done, you're going to press create tabs. And this step takes about two to three minutes. And it's important to not close this page. You can leave this page by going through the different, um, your other different tabs or working on something else, but do not leave this page. What it's doing is adding a bunch of really important resourceful tabs for you down at the bottom. And it's just automatically doing it on its own. I'm going to wait a minute for the first one to pop up. And then after that, I'll uh, pause the video while the rest of them load. Okay, and it's been about three minutes, and these are just now popping up. There's going to be nine tabs total. Right now, I only have one, two, three, four, five, including my form responses. So this isn't even fully complete yet. Um, just be patient with it. It is working. And um, then I'm, I'm going to pause the video again so it can load a little bit faster. All right, so all of my tabs are loaded. I have a simple right or wrong tab, a class results tab, incorrect students, auto feedback, response feedback, topic score breakdown, and document and email configuration. This is probably the most important one. Printing options and a two by two printout. Okay, and then what's neat is once it loads, you can click next up here to find out more about each individual tab. So if we do that, it will tell you which tab or um, what 
each tab does. And you can go through and read this if you'd like to. You can even pause the video now to read this through. Um, I am going to go through each of the tabs individually so you can see what they look like. Um, so before I do that, let me just show you, um, you probably already know, but after you create your form, you would go to send form and you would email or um, maybe make a tiny URL or a bit.ly to send this form out to your students. I'm going to do that now. And once you send out your form, your student will take the test and then you can view the results. Now, I sent this to Jackie Sermon, the coordinator at the Middle School Academy in Marietta, and these are the results that she gave me. And typically, this is what you would find any time that you used Google Forms, and you could see all of the questions, the questions that were originally uh, posed to the student, and then their answers. Um, what is awesome about the Super Quiz add-on is all of these tabs, and this is kind of when we go into this. So these are her responses. It doesn't show me right now if they are correct or incorrect. Um, it just shows me her responses. Okay, and that's why this is form responses one. But if I click on this tab, right or wrong, it tells me it kind of color codes um, the information. So blue is correct, and the zeros are incorrect. And as far as I know, I have not been able to find a way to change the color coding, um, but for right now, blue is correct and these blank ones are incorrect. All right, so it looks like she did okay, and I purposefully asked her to get some wrong so I can show you guys, but um, what we are looking for is majority blue, and then in these tabs, don't change any of this um, in the formula bar, just leave it as is. They already have this all set up for you. So um, just to clarify, I have not done anything to the documents other than install the super quiz add-on. So then um, ultimately I should have a lot of students scores here, um, but for right now I can view my class results tab and it shows me a breakdown of percentages of who got these questions right or wrong um, in this section. So let me make this so you can see. Um, so in this question, which answer below makes the equation true? 100% of my students got that correct. In this one, what is the solution to the equation? 0% of my students got them correct. So I need to review these two questions, actually these three questions, with the entire class because it's showing that the entire class has a need in that area. Okay, and then to break it down even further, this is really helpful if you do groups. Um, there's a section for incorrect students. If you click on the incorrect students, it tells me the question again. I'm going to make this so you can see it. It tells me the question and it tells me the student's username for the ones only if they got them wrong. So this student got them these answers correct, so their name is not there. But they got these ones incorrect, so their name appears here. Ultimately, once I have more students um, who have taken this assessment, I'll have maybe Bob and Joe and Tim and Sarah who all missed these questions and then I can put them in a group and have them work just on this topic. So that way I know that they are being, um, that information is being reinforced with them uh, specifically because that was their need. Okay, and then the next one is the one that requires the most work from you, but it's also the most rewarding part. It is the auto feedback configuration. And the chart, when you get it, looks something like this. It's all color coded already for you. And it tells you the codes for each of the colors at the top. The key is to not change anything in yellow. Don't change the words, don't change the font, don't change anything in yellow. And then um, the pink you can change, green you can change, blue you can change, the yellow is the only one you cannot change. All right, and then red is optional. Um, so let's go ahead and go through this. For this one, they're wanting the topic of the questions that were on my test. So if I go back to my Google form, I made um, section headers right here, and this one I called possible solutions. And there are one, two, three, four, five questions in my possible solutions category. So what I do, on my responses is I typed in possible solutions for my topic 
and then I typed in that there were five possible questions in that category. And then in my next category, I have solving system of equations. And right here, I typed that out, solving system of equations. And there were six questions in that category, so I have six. Oops, sorry. And then at the end of this assessment, I did two review questions from a previous chapter. And I just, so I titled it review questions, and I put two questions in there. So review and two questions. All right, and then what you do after you enter your categories and your number of questions is go on over to the right, and you have topic one. And topic one correlates with the topic one here. So if any of my students missed a question in the possible solutions category, this feedback will come up to them. So I told them, review the chart on page 74 in your book for help with this concept. Then if any of my students miss a, a question in this category, I have them so if they read this feedback. It says, remember to choose the best possible way to solve the system of equation, graphing or algebraically. And I gave them page numbers to reference. And if they missed review questions, um, it gives them this feedback and it tells them these are based on slope intercept form. Review the attributes of slope intercept form on page 47 or by watching my video on slope on my website. So this is meant for your students to read and they, I will show you how they will see that in just a moment. Um, the last thing that you need to do on this page is, again, keep um, the topic one, keep those consistent. And right here, let's say that Sarah takes the quiz and she misses three questions in the possible solutions category. What Super Quiz does is it then gives her another question that she can answer based off of that topic that she missed. So she can review it and then she can take it again. And I got to choose these questions. So I wrote in here, how many solutions does the equation 3x plus 9 equals 3 parentheses x plus 3 have? And she can go, th go through and answer those questions if she'd like to. Um, you can also make a, re a requirement as part of your homework, but you can't make it a requirement through Super Quiz. Um, and then the last thing that's awesome on here um, are two, actually it's two more things. Um, this is the grading scale. When your student is finished, they will get some sort of grade. Um, I'm going to eliminate the E category so that my students don't think that they get an E. So a 0% or more will be an F. 40% to 60% will be a D. 60% will be C. 80% B. 100% is A. Um, and I'm actually going to make a few adjustments to this. I'm going to make a C be a 70% and a D is going to be a 60% and then 0% or more is going to be an F. So that way these align with our um, grading categories at the school. Then over here it tells my students if they get 100% it's going to tell them fantastic work. If they get a between a 50 and a 100% it's going to say please review and if it's less than a 50 I typed in needs improvement please schedule tutoring so that way they can see directly oh I'm not understanding this I need to come to tutoring okay so that's the first step on here or the this is the bulk of what you would need to do for your students now moving over to the response feedback tab when you click on this it will show the student who took the test and this the comments that are going along with that student so it says your understanding of possible solutions, please review. Your understanding of solving system of equations, please review. Your understanding of review questions, fantastic work. So these are the, the feedback um, statements that your student will receive immediately upon finishing the test. Um, and then it will say, please review your answers, make progress by reviewing the chart on page 74, and remember to choose the best possible way to solve the system of equation. So this is automatically generated based on the information you gave in the auto feedback configuration. And as of right now, I only have about 30 seconds left on this screencast. So I'm going to make a part two to um, finish. And the second part will explain how to set this up to automatically email your students with their grade and their results. And um, again, just go ahead and tune into part two to find the rest of the answers.